we are now going to learn about continuation. So what are continuation? Continuation is a primitive construct that represents a point in time in which execution is going to continue. So it, it usually consists of two things. A program state, that is to say, what are the variables, the values of all your variables at a certain point. Then the remaining code means from that point on, you're going to run some code and you need to be able to save state. Let's, let's imagine you're running a program. You, you need to save the state at some point for some reason. You choose a point, an execution point. Let's say, let's say you, are, you have a debugger. You have your program and you, you specify the breakpoint. Your program is going to run until it reaches the breakpoint, and then it's going to pause, right? This idea where, where you pause the execution of a program, that represents a continuation. So the continuation will consist of the two things, which are the, the program state and also the remaining code that needs to be run. Continuations are used to implement programming languages. They are used in exceptions to implement the exception mechanism, generators, which are used to represent basically for each or iterators, the for each construct, I mean. And coroutines, which is just a way to implement threats or form of concurrency. We're going to see in today's lecture these two exceptions and generators, and we're going to implement them back in. So, how can we represent continuation? We're going to study two ways of doing it. The first one is via continuation passing style, which is a form of inversion of control. We'll see what that means. And after that, we're going to see a first class construct in Racket, which is known as call CC. It's call with continuation. It's going to be later. So, what is continuation passing style? Continuation passing style asks the following question. It's how do we abstract computation? And as we know, is with a function. So how do we abstract um, a continuation by using a function? Well, the idea is that we want to be able to control the control flow. <laughs> so because we need to control the control flow, the idea is that Returning, so signifying the end of execution of something should not be done directly by the function, but instead it should be delegated to another function outside of that. So what does that mean in practice? Well, consider the following code highlighted in blue in the left-hand side. So you, here we have a function f that returns, takes a parameter x, and calculates x plus 2. That's the return value. Essentially, if you execute this function, you want to return x plus 2. Instead of returning directly, we want, in the continuation passing style, there is an extra parameter that is the return function. And when you want to return a value, you call that function rather than returning directly. And this is abstracting this is more abstract, it should be abstraction control flow. And the way you abstract control flow is really by inversion of control, which means that you don't call things, you let things call you. And that's basically the Hollywood principle. Don't call us, we'll call you. That's what I mean when, when you have, um, if you're familiar with Java frameworks, you'll have things like Spring or other enterprise frameworks. Always the idea is you don't specify control flow. You just give the control flow, you delegate that to the framework. And with that, you can do a lot of interesting things. So to put it in, in more concrete terms, when we learn about map and fold, what we define map and fold are a way to invert control, right? 
In what way? Well, the function that you give as parameter is the user function. Who defines what the control flow is is doing is actually the call is actually fault and map respectively right so here you have an idea of inversion of control that is to say you call the function you give the the user gives a certain function but fold and map are the ones who control they are the big shots in hollywood so they call you you don't call them right so internally fold will will be implemented in any way it chooses and we've even, even saw ways of optimizing fold, right? And ways of optimizing map. So that is basically, imagine that to be an engine that is specifying how the engine is going to be built. Inversion of control is just a way of saying that something else is actually controlling the execution, not you, whoever you is. So here in continuation passing style, what we are um, what we are abstracting over is the act of returning a value. Okay, that's what we're trying to control. With that, we can we can have control over how we sequence function calls. Let's see how that happens. So where have we seen continuation passing style? We actually have seen continuation pass passing style in our optimized version of map. So in our optimized version of map, we have this so uh, continuation passing style code is one where the return is actually a function. So you, here, this is known as continuation passing style because Acume is the return function that I'm passing the result, the return result at the end. This is one idea where the final result is happening, being communicated through the continuation. Here I'm providing the continuation, but I'll see, I'll show you more examples. So let's say we want to define, oops, let's say we want to revisit the safe division that we defined before. We didn't have, um, let's say we don't have exception. So one way of doing that is now I want to be able to return. There's essentially two lines of control flow, right? One is when things, when I return something that went well, and the other one is when I return something that went wrong. So the thing that went well, you can think of basically when you do return, that's just the thing that went well, okay? If you throw an exception, that's essentially a return. If you think about it, a return and a, uh, a return and throw, they do exactly the same thing semantically. They terminate the function. But now because we are using a functional programming, we are able to have control over execution by abstracting return as a function. So what, what do we do? We want to define a safe division. Let me write that. Write safe division. Don't have this. So now, if I do safe uh, 10, 1, Let's see what happens. Well, it returns another function. So if I run it, I just get, just get, I just guess this inner lambda, right? So what is the lambda? The inner lambda is just specifying which function I should call to communicate my return value. Okay, so let me, Pass display and if I display on the left and display on the right, it's just going to print it out. So let's see what's going on here. So, oh, I call this and I pass two parameters which are just. If I pass this, I just got 10. 
is here. That's a bit confusing. Let's just write uh, fine. Okay, we'll call this print okay. What print okay does is print f a and then a prints x. And I'm going to write print error. A print error. I can see that the call OK was called. Call print OK was called. See here that print OK was called and it's passed 10 to it. So with this, this is known as continuation passing style, again, because the return value is communicated to another function. And that happens in both branches. And that's the only way we have to communicate returning values. And we are encoding the notion of there existing two different return values. By convention, the left-hand side means the result was OK, and the right-hand side means the result was now let's do the case by 10 by 0. And I get division by 0, which is exactly what happens. In so now the question is, how do I chain two things together? Um, not very easy, right? So now let's learn about that in the next video.